So now that we've looked at the mean and the median, that leads to talking about the shape of the distribution. And in terms of the shape, three things are going to happen. The first thing is you might get what's called a symmetrical distribution. And the key here is this is where the means and the medians are basically the same. So when you go to draw this symmetrical shape, you end up with what's called a bell-shaped curve. And so it's kind of just, I don't know, an upside down U. But what happens is my mean and my median are pretty much in the middle, right? If it's symmetrical and half is below and half is above, my median would have to be visually in the middle. But that's not often the case. So in part two, we talk about having right skewed data. This is where you have a longer tail on the right side. And the reason for that is because your mean is larger. And so that will actually be, think of it as pulling your values to the right. So here's my right skewed curve where I'm pulling it, stretching it out to the right. And so my median and mean follow accordingly. Like think of the age you get your driver's license. Most people get their driver's license between age 16 to 21. But you know, if you live in New York City, you might not need a driver's license till you're 50. So all of a sudden, the average age of getting a driver's license is 35. Half of the people get it before they're 21, but the mean got pulled higher. The other example, part three, would be to have left skewed data. So you can kind of think of this as the opposite, where my curve is pulled to the left side, and so my average is closer to the left side, my median, where my mean is somewhere off to the right. Um, an example would be if I wanted to find the average age of everybody in class today, and somebody happened to bring their one-year-old child. So I might end up with an average age of 14 for the age in this class, which probably isn't right. But are half of the people under 20? Probably. So that's an example.